Please stand and let us pray. Almighty God, may the gifts we have received from your altar kindle in our hearts a longing for the heavenly homeland and cause us to journey forward, following in the Savior's footsteps to the place where, for our sake, he entered before us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has ended for those who just walked in and don't want to stick it out. There's some good food over here if you want to. It's probably one of the better deals downtown, but anyway. The rest of you may be seated. Good afternoon. My name is Vicki Klima. I'm the parish director for St. Olaf. We are here tonight to celebrate Father Patrick Kennedy's time at St. Olaf and his retirement. I didn't think we'd get here, but we did. Feel free to exit the church if you have other engagements. Father Kennedy was ordained in 1977. He served at a number of archdiocesan parishes and offices. He was at St. Olaf as an associate from 1978 to 1982, and he came here as pastor in 2014. Whether channeling Monsignor Frank Fleming, which he does a lot, or supervising a million dollars in renovation, including doing things such as bringing St. Olaf back into church, He said St. Olaf was haunting him. <laughs> and the new crucifix uh, that brought together the new and the old and is now permanently here. Whether he was presiding at liturgies and many, many confessions or overseeing the details of the parish, Father Kennedy has left his mark on St. Olaf and on those of us who have been privileged enough to work with him, worship with him, and know him along the way. We've asked a couple people to reflect with us, speak about his work. First, parishioner Matt Norris. He's a member of our parish advisory board, the strategic planning committee, and he was also a member of the committee for the fundraiser we had last fall of ministry and music. So Matt, please come forward. In honor of Father Kennedy, I'd like to begin in a way that'll be at least familiar to those of you who are regulars here at St. Olaf, and that's by extending a warm welcome to any visitors who may be joining us this evening. <laughs> we're, we're not sure what it is that brings you downtown, but we're incredibly pleased that you've decided to join us. You may not realize this, but retired priests rely heavily on the generosity of their visitors in order to support them in their various ministries. And so I know Father Kennedy would be incredibly grateful if uh, you were feeling a little extra generous this evening and leaving behind a bit of your hard-earned treasure if you see a collection basket go by you. Father Kennedy swept into town from the Wild West of Tucson, Arizona, a big name and an even bigger legend. I'd heard a bit about the man from my aunt who worked with him at Pox Christi, but I was anxious to size him up for myself. And I have to admit, I was pretty quickly impressed. After all, he's the only priest I've ever known who manages to turn the end of every Mass into his very own State of the Union ceremony. 
The presider in chief slowly working his way up the center aisle, shaking hands, kissing babies, <laughs> autographing bulletins. <laughs> but I've had the opportunity to get, know, get to know Father even better over these past few years serving with him on the parish advisory board. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that there is very little here at St. Olaf that Father Kennedy has not touched in a very positive way over the last five years. From our physical space, so many rooms throughout this church which he oversaw the renovation of, bringing them into the 21st century, making them more energy efficient, making them more effective for today's church and safer for vulnerable populations to the people we have the opportunity to serve every day in our location here in downtown Minneapolis. I think uh, the best example of that is Father's insistence that we leave the bathrooms open and unlocked for them to use throughout the day. No matter how many times that means they may need to be cleaned throughout the day, he saw it as the least that we could do to uh, provide the basic human dignity of having a warm, safe space for those people to take care of their human needs to our parking lot and so many other parts of our grounds that over the next few years will be transformed into a wonderful lasting physical legacy of Father Kennedy's leadership as they become much needed affordable workforce housing here in the downtown area. And finally, he touched the hearts and minds of the St. Olaf parishioners every Sunday and at daily mass through his insightful and inspiring homilies. Although I do have to say I did extensive research through the YouTube archives in preparation for this speech and it turns out that the only thing Father Kennedy has preached about more over the last five years than Jesus in the Gospels is parking and road construction. <laughs> in fact, I don't know if you saw this in the gossip column of the Catholic Spirit, but uh, apparently Father Kennedy isn't actually retiring. Rather, he was recruited away from us by a local talent scout who was so impressed by his skills in this area that they hired him to be a traffic reporter on the local morning news. <laughs> so, so watch for him um, in the morning. Uh, Father Kennedy has also been a tremendous leader of this parish, and he has a lot of tremendous leadership skills and in so many ways has left this parish better than when he found it. I think one of them in particular is from a financial perspective. Um, but that wasn't without a lot of very hard, difficult decisions along the way. Decisions that required a lot of courage and a lot of fortitude and that I know uh, weighed heavily at times on Father Kennedy. Uh, but we as St. Olaf are the beneficiaries of that leadership and he has given us a tremendous gift a very strong, solid foundation from which we have the opportunity now to build with our new pastor. And I, I'm a true believer in the fact that one of the best tests of a leader is his or her ability to leave a place better than they found it. And in that regard, Father Kennedy passes the test with flying colors. And so on behalf of the parishioners here at St. Olaf Father, we extend a huge thank you for your leadership and all you've done for us over the past five years. We're incredibly grateful and we wish you nothing but the best in your retirement. We hope that you'll come back downtown and visit us often and, <laughs> and that you'll remember to leave a little bit of your hard-earned treasure with us when you do. Thank you, Matt. Well done. Uh, a second parishioner we'd like to hear from tonight is Vicki Costello. She is a superb volunteer here at St. Olaf, doing things like money counting and answering the phone, being with us in the, the back offices, and sings in the choir. Vicki, come forward. I had to write my notes down. I, that's a hard act to follow, but I'll do my best. There might be some repetition in some of the messages that were delivered um, with the first speaker. 
but I can start with, I've been a parishioner here at St. Olaf since the day that Father uh, Kennedy was leaving. I'd been away from the Catholic Church for a while, and I was reconsidering coming back, and a colleague suggested that I try out St. Olaf. So when the Sunday that I chose to come to St. Olaf happened to be the Sunday that Father was saying goodbye his first time. And my first impression was, wow, Catholic priests are a whole lot better looking today than they were. <laughs> The second thing I was impressed with, and I remember very well, is that he said that someday he would be back to run this parish. And Father, I have to warn you, when you say things out loud and God's listening, you got to be careful. <laughs> so anyone who's around Father Kennedy um, for very long gets the opportunity to experience his playfulness and sometimes his a little bit of sarcastic humor. Um, you had a little bit of it at his homily, so I don't know if I can top it, but I have a few examples that I can give you. So on his first uh, All Saints Day that he was here the second time around, you know, we put the banners up around the church of all the saints, and he made the note, note that there was no St. Patrick. So I'm not sure quite how he delivered that message, perhaps sternly, perhaps with the Father Kennedy look but that banner quickly came up and was dead center. <laughs> it even now shows up in the sanctuary on, on St. Patrick's Day. Um, Father is all about hospitality. So um, one day he overheard one of our um, people that, one of the staff people, was, had been approached by a parishioner wanting to know what time were confessions for the Christmas holiday. Well, Father thought that that staff person was asking about herself. So he very generously said he had two hours at least that he could spend <laughs> to hear her confession. So uh, when he asks, when is a job going to be done? And the response is, on Friday, he quickly says, which Friday? <laughs> um, when you happen to make a mistake, his words are always very sympathetic, like, I know you're doing your best, but it's the look that he can give that kind of says, boy, that was really dumb. <laughs> He's been known to say, there is only one Napoleon around here, and that's me. So, finally, one of the last ones, as part of the hospitality, he goes around, as you know, he goes around greeting um, all of the parishioners. And when he greets some more of the elderly parishioners, he's, he has been heard to say, are you still here? <laughs> I thought we already had your funeral. Oh, and by the way, did you remember to include St. Olaf in your will? So, on a personal note, he really dislikes being startled. So whenever the maintenance folks need to go to the rectory, they always whistle in the hallway, in the stairwell, in order to give him a heads up. He's an early riser, 4.30 a.m. Therefore, that's why we have the 6 a.m. Sunday Mass, if you're wondering why that got started. So, but on the flip side, he's, an early, he's early to bed. So if any of you are planning to have a conversation with him tonight, do so before 8.30, or he may not be around. <laughs> and for his family, this is from his own lips. I, just, I heard this just recently. <laughs> According to Father, his parents left him in a basket on the steps of St. Luke's. <laughs> when he was two. <laughs> Unfortunately, St. Luke sent him back and told his parents they wouldn't take him until he was 21. <laughs> All right. 
now a little bit more serious. Does anyone remember um, Father's homily on uh, when he um, on St. Olaf Day back in 2014? <laughs> I tried to go back in the uh, on the in the YouTube and in the archives. I couldn't find it. They only go back to 2016. So, but I did recollect two things. One was that. Um, they stick out for me anyway. He talked about the celebration of the Eucharist as a supreme act of hospitality. And as a Eucharistic people, St. Olaf must be about hospitality. Um, throughout his five years here at St. Olaf, that's the road he has been guiding us on. I'm not sure about you, but when I have a dinner party, I make sure my home looks the best it can. I clean up, put out fresh linens, get the flowers out, and um, try to set my table so that it looks welcoming. Father has made sure that our parish home is the best it can be to welcome guests. With a capital campaign, I'm in a little dried mouth here. No. <laughs> Gotta get a little saliva going. With a capital campaign, he oversaw renovations that ensure the building looks, feels, and actually is well cared for and up to date. His mantra was that we were going to do it once, and we're going to do it right. It is a right place. It is a welcoming place. We welcome all people. As a downtown parish, we get folks from all walks of life. And with Father's leadership, we have provided an environment that makes room for everyone. By partnering with Adult Shelter Connect and with our Samaritan ministry, we strive to ensure that everyone is treated with dignity and respect. St. Olaf is a unique parish. It's, very, it's small in size, membership-wise, but mighty in its presence in the diocese. We are the terriers of parishes. We are small, but we act big. Big liturgy, big music, big hospitality. Needless to say, this way of being can be a challenge on a relatively small budget. Father has had to make some really tough choices to ensure that we continue to carry out our mission and do it well. He believes in stewardship and sharing what we have with others. Father's an excellent administrator, <clears throat> but his true calling is to be pastoral. We've all been graced with his homilies, which are per often personal, full of wisdom, and rich with food for thought about how to be better human beings. He has compassion for those who are suffering and reaches out to help them. It is not uncommon for him to respond to people in need even on his day off. Like Jesus, Father Kennedy is all about the people. He knows the value of showing up with a word, a kind gesture, a greeting, a prayer. People know that he cares about them and loves them. I could keep going, but we all want to go to a party. So I'll end by saying thank you, Father, for choosing to come to St. Olaf. All of your past leadership and and it has been considerable, made you the perfect person to lead us at this time in our history. You will be missed. We wish you the very best in the next chapter of your life. Get some rest, travel, and come back to see us often. I'm sure we will find something for you to do. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Vicki. Vicki, Vicki. Uh, finally, we'd like a member of the family, Cousin Greg. We're asking him <laughs> for just a few closing remarks. Oh my God, help us. He only feigns disdain when I come up here like this. 
When I was at uh, helping him MC uh, getting out of St. Olaf's, not St. Olaf's, at, at uh, the hell was it? Huh? Oz Christie, yes. Well, everybody was saying, he's so good looking, such a. Hit. The women were saying, his father, what a waste. That's his name. <laughs> So I heard about four or five of these in coming up in the. In, we want to thank you, Father. You've done so much and been so much for us, and you're so handsome. And, we, and I was, <laughs> how did that get in here? So I said, finally, I said to, to the people, I want you to understand something. That good looks doesn't just come. Pat and I and some other people in the family have had to work hard for it, so uh, let's not just flip it off. Well, Patrick was born into a house that was to grow, to grow, to grow. Nine, seven, and two. Seven of the girls, two of the boys, and he was the second oldest. So um, his mother and dad, uh, throughout their life, never learned to define the word shy. They didn't even know it was S-H-Y. And so if you ask Patrick what he thinks about something, be careful because he will tell you exactly what he thinks. <laughs> and that's very dangerous. He came home one time from church over having, serving mass and Jenna was uh, giving food to two or three of the girls, the younger ones, and. And she said, go in the, in the kitchen and help Judy with the dishes. And get it, come out here, I've got some other things for you to do. Well, of course, what came out was the smart mouth. So, never mind the smart mouth. You were just over there and you had communion in your mouth 10 minutes ago and now you're smarting off to me. Don't do that. <laughs> well, Patrick has told us that he is going away for a short time into Texas. And down there, what he's going to do is to just scrub out places where the immigrants are and help polish windows and things like this. I said, well, Patrick, what, um, well, I, so I'm just gonna just do the everyday stuff and it'll never have any, I'm not in charge of it, I'm just going there to do the work. I'm thinking Jenna finally had her, had her heavenly wish granted by God. First of all, Patrick, as most people don't know, came out of the womb with a clipboard. <laughs> fine, fine. And all nine of them would say to you after a while, fine. It was their mothers giving up or not knowing what else to do. Whatever I said to you, fine. And she would also do this, and she would scratch the top of her head without moving the permanent at all. So I want you all to just take your hand, and put it up here on top of your head, scratch, don't get any hair moving around, and just say, fine. <laughs> Some of you thought that he was really on your side when he said that here all those five years. No, it was fending you off. So Patrick, you have gone to so many parishes that have been very hard parishes, the hard in the sense of just real enormous tasks you've taken on. Most of them I would simply not have done. Yeah, no, thank you, Archbishop, but I, my prayer leads me elsewhere. And... <laughs> so Pat goes out in, to Coon Rapids to be the, 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 the pastor of a parish where the only other guy who had been there was in 1964. He, he founded the parish, and he was still there, going to be a, a senior assistant. And... I mean, this guy was like a motor. He was just going all the time in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, in the middle of this, in the middle of that. And Patrick was supposed to come in and just kind of take over. Well, he did it, but it was a, quite, a, quite a charismatic thing. And filling in for Harvey Egan down in St. Joan of Arc, he followed Harvey Egan. Like, who follows Harvey Egan? <laughs> Oh yeah, right. Oh, then he was—he had the privilege of being vocation director, 
that was real good. We were having just lots of priests coming out after that, Pat. We had, thank you for your work. <laughs> they decided not to put him in charge of any money because they thought he might go bankrupt. So he had to be in charge of vocations for priesthood. And coming down here, he had been here before with Frank Fleming, loved it down here. He was, was the junior associate and just running around doing stuff. So he came down here and everything was fine. And I came down to visit with him and he said, come on, I gotta show you something, come on upstairs. So he was up the rectory on the second floor. He says, now just look at this stuff, look at the filth along this. Do you see that? I mean, what were they thinking of? This over here, that crack was in that plaster when I was here as an associate. <laughs> And it's still there. And he kept going around doing this for about 10 minutes. And I said, Patrick, he said, what? I said, I'm having a spiritual experience. <laughs> and he said, what, what do you mean? I said, right now I think both my mother and your mother are reincarnate in you. <laughs> so he learned to say things uh, with authority. His father was very much that way. And he had, also, he managed to say things with all the kinds of service he can give. And in the meantime, dribbling the other eight children around him to figure out what he was going to do. And I want you to know, I, I truly mean it. There is none of them that knows what shy means. So in that house, if you ask people what was going to happen, just get out of the way. <laughs> and Patrick being here in the last five years, did an enormous amount to the physical plant and all the stuff that's coming up now. You know all of that. But he just walked in and he, he sees it has to happen and it happens. But some people are going to be angry at you. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if you do that staffing change, people just who like those people, and they've been here for a long time, they're not going to like it at all. Yeah. <laughs> all of it had nothing to do with what he's going to do. Fine. Thank you, Father Greg. The choir now has a little gift for Father in a song of blessing that they would like to sing.
Thank you. Mary Kennedy, staff person, is going to give us some instructions for the dinner. I would be remiss if I didn't tell, explain to you one last final time. We really are not related. <laughs> there are two reasons for that. Number one, he already has a sister named Mary Kennedy. And number two, he really always wishes we were. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. We've had this wonderful <laughs> We've had this wonderful Eucharistic meal and in honor of Father Kennedy, we want to share hospitality this evening. And so as we leave mass, we want you to head out to the door, take a hard right, go down the hallway, and we have two areas, not one but two areas for you to dine, and they are both identical. So on one side is the Ferliti gathering room, so come down the hallway, go all the way down, take the right, and you can go in the room there. We have hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken sandwiches, potato salad, broccoli salad, beans, um, homemade chocolate chip cookies, chips, and all of that, plus root beer and beer. Or you can head down the hallway Take the elevator or the steps up to Fleming Foyer, where you can start on the piers of food, endless food, and then move into Fleming Hall and enjoy your meal up there. Don't worry about staying here waiting for Father Kennedy. We will bring him to you. So thank you for being the best boss. He was such a good boss that some of us are working for him twice. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Anyway, we hope that you're going to tell a lot of stories tonight. We sure, we're sure that you will. But Father Kennedy, we give you great, great thanks for everything you've done for each one of us and for everything you'll do for us in the future as well. <laughs> Let's stand and give him thanks. <laughs>